Myself. Me too! Be prepared to cringe because we're serving up the top 10 worst dishes of MasterChef Season 3. Squirrel pie. What? Squirrel pie. I am excited. Horsin' around. Are we being punked? Stay, Mickey. Be good. First impressions are everything when it comes to meeting people and especially important when it comes to an interview. There are people that will practice days or weeks before to make sure they don't mess up what they'll say or how they approach a handshake. In a cooking competition, how do you think most people handle their first impressions as chefs? First name is? Holly. Renee. Dwayne. Hi, I'm Laura. Nick. Or do some just let the smell of their food try to entice their customers or a trio of judges? What about the way they make an entrance? During the second episode of MasterChef Season 3, the judges met a cowboy who made his way into the audition in an old classic Western style. I'm praying that he's not cooking that thing. Howdy, gentlemen. Though it might have seemed like a good idea for the home chef, we're sure he didn't think about who would take care of his horse while he cooked. Behave, Mickey. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. That can't be sanitary. <laughs> Bubble, bubble, witchy trouble. While Mike rides off with his apron, our next home cooks have some tricks of their own to win the judges over. Hopes, dreams, and wishes are what drive people to make goals and milestones so they can reach their dreams. I lost my sister six months ago to a tragic car accident. I'm doing this in her name. She's everywhere that I go. This is for her. A lot of people meditate to bring good energy to them so that they can achieve their goals, and others use dream boards. This is Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> This is yogurt. <laughs> In the second episode of MasterChef Season 3, there was one person, out of several auditions, whose energy made herself stand out, but alas, she had failed. Bewitch the judges with desire. Astonished, Gordon, Graham, and Joe did not know what to think. Joe, one of your ex-girlfriends? Then, while she was cooking, she was chanting more spells. Air, fire, water, earth, goddess, now your magic birth. She could be the unknown Sanderson sister of the famous Hocus Pocus trio. At least she didn't use any weird ingredients in her cooking like toad eyes or Dead Bev's toes! Just as she was finishing up, Gordon told her that he was scared. We wouldn't blame him, she would have been a cauldron of trouble. I myself. Me too! <laughs> Great pan of fire. I yell fire and uh, Chef Ramsay comes over so uh, valiantly. Mistakes are normal, and they can help a person learn to improve. The only problem is that mistakes can come with a level of danger. One contestant demonstrated how one should be aware of their mistake before it gets dangerous. During a mystery box challenge, contestant Helen seemed to have forgotten something in her oven. The temperature was too high for whatever she was cooking. This mistake she made managed to burn her food in the oven by having it catch on fire. Goodness gracious, quit balls of fire! Gordon had to come save the day, and he almost burnt his hand in the process. Yeah, no, I just burnt my hand when I had the clock on it, it's fine. When he stated that she almost set the place on fire, she laughed. You set the place on fire? <laughs> what? No, it's not funny. You're what right, you you're right. Though everything turned out fine, disappointment showed from the three judges who expected these contestants to show some professionalism with the equipment provided to them. Literally, if you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Trust me, you've got your neck in a noose. Be careful. Risotto basket case. I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at the MasterChef trophy. I'm thinking, nah. When cooking, certain rules are put in place for certain recipes so the food item can be cooked properly. It will either be an updated or new technique that makes the food better or cook more efficiently, or it completely fails. Make sure you don't get any shells in there. The main challenge was to make the Italian dish risotto, which consisted of sautéing rice in a broth instead of steaming it. You have to season all the way through. You have to season the onions when they go in. You have to toast the rice, add the wine, burn the alcohol out. Though some of the contestants had not made risotto before... I feel a little nauseous because I've only made risotto once in my life and it was not very good. There was one person who completely disappointed Gordon and absolutely insulted Joe with their dish. Helene, the one who almost set the MasterChef kitchen on fire, presented her dish, which looked okay from a distance, but up close, there was a lot wrong with it. When you can still see the center of that bright brain of rice, it's 
definitely undercooked. Gordon was about to blow his top off when he saw her amateurish idea to wrap the clams. Then he found out that the clams were still raw. When Joe got to the plate, he was just as upset as Gordon. Scallop basket. Go in the garbage basket. Rewritten rules. We've rewritten the rule books, so none of you should ever get too comfortable in this kitchen. If there is one thing to know while in a competition, it's to be prepared and expect the unexpected. Like carrying band-aids in case of a cut, or having some extra cash in case your cards don't work. Be I will be prepared. <laughs> for what? Unfortunately, three contestants did not take the safe route for the turn of events in episode four of MasterChef season three. I'm really not surprised that my plate is one of the top dishes. These other cooks are gonna have to step up their game if they're gonna wanna compete with me. Shockingly, the judges decided to rewrite the rules and flip the script. You managed to cook what we think are the worst three dishes. One person served caramelized bananas with his overcooked duck. The second person had raw duck on their plate with a dry bread tower. And the third contestant left the majority of his duck behind after being told his baked item for the dish should only be used for dessert. Profiteroles are a dessert and they remain a dessert and they shouldn't be tampered with. Absolutely. And just as Gordon went to announce who would be leaving... I just wanted to say that I'm not, definitely not ready to go home yet. And you were right, the hero of this dish was the duck. And out of the two of us, I'd say that... Morally wrong. I'm looking at my dish, the plating, everything was fantastic. My dish came out exactly how I wanted. Every day when people eat either at home or out on the town, quality and cleanliness are a part of an important system for cooking. Surfaces clean before and after to make sure meats don't spread E. coli or become spoiled by gathering bacteria, and that all silverware and dishes are not dirty. Washed? Are you saying washed the rag? Oh, God. During the elimination round, the contestants were tasked to make a classic risotto recipe. All contestants were struggling with the consistency of their rice, while few struggled with the flavor components. The cranberries, the nuts, the gooseberries, already just unheard of in a risotto. That is a disaster. Dave did something that was against the cook's conduct in particular. Once finished, Dave presented his dish thinking that the judges wouldn't know what he did, but he was caught. I didn't wash them out completely. If they're not rinsed super well, especially the morels, it's like a dirt sponge. Dave told Joe what not to eat on the plate. Don't grab a morel. Will you tell me what to avoid? I'm here to eat the dish, or should yeah. I eat selectively? After Joe took a bite and chewed, he spit out his food right in front of him. A little too sandy for me. Not thoroughly washed food in a kitchen can prove that a chef's morals are broken. Guys, some basic stuff like feeding us sand and things like that, not good. Tortellini travesty. It's a very weird looking tortellini. How'd you get that shape? Sit um. on them? <sighs> Pasta is one of the many great comfort foods that is easy to make. Too much macaroni! The thing that makes it proper pasta is how well one's technique is when making the pasta dough. However, you have to really not know what you're doing to make pasta feel and taste bad. Just like in this episode, where a team faced a pressure test to show their best pasta making technique. Your pressure test today is all about Tortellini! Three of the members on the team knew that one person had caused their loss in the previous challenge due to poor time management and serving raw ground beef to customers. Gordon Ramsay came back with a raw burger. You guys are absolutely insane. To overcome the argument between them, they were determined to let the tortellini do the talking, but two contestants were expected to fail. Anna started off with a non-traditional method when she started mixing the dough. How is pasta gonna relax being spun at a thousand mile an hour? I have no idea. Tanya had started becoming flustered and let the pressure take her over. When judged, Tanya and Anna both made bad tortellini with poor technique, but Tanya's tasted worse. From the moment that we presented what this challenge was gonna be, you seem shocked. Cheddar cheese disaster. Your pressure test today is about the most American of desserts. Do you love cheese? A lot of people say that they love cheese, even people who can't have cheese admit to eating it because it tastes so good. That's it, cheese. We'll go somewhere where there's cheese. But what if it were a garnish? Episode 5 of MasterChef Season 3 had someone who ruined a classic dish and cheese in one hour. What in God's good earth inspired you to cover your apple pie with cheese? During a pressure test, the losing team had to make a famous and relatively simple American classic. Delicious. 
humble. Apple pie. Michael, who didn't seem to have a clue, was the only one person who hadn't made an apple pie before. Are you incorporating cheese into your crust? I'm sprinkling it on top to kind of help hold the top crust together and give it a little bit of saltiness. He tried to make up for his lack of knowledge by adding something he thought would pair well with apples. Unfortunately, the dough inside was watery and undercooked. The apples bland, and the cheese crust did nothing to make the pie good at all. The cheese flavor is completely dry and crusty. There's no bottom crust. Could be back at school soon. Breakfast brunch battle. We are getting plates out, but the quality of the food that I'm receiving is not up to par. While on vacation, it's especially nice to have a freshly prepped breakfast that is delivered straight to your room. What happens if it's not a good quality meal? You'd send it back for another one, right? Waiter, I believe I said in the soup, and you're looking under the soup. It's an important part of a hotel experience that room service be of the highest standard of quality. During another team challenge, the chefs had to showcase those high hotel and master chef standards for cooking and scheduled room service breakfast for 150 guests. Monty was the blue team's expediter to make sure that the food was good to go and that it went out on time. But a clash happened when one egg went out raw. You're cooking them, he's taking them, you're serving them. It's raw, 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 raw. and someone returned a plate with one of the cook's hairs in it. We have a hair on a plate. Customer sent it back. <sighs> Upset, the blue team's captain, Josh, decided to try and take over quality control because Monty had not been doing a good job. This led the team captain and expediter to feud up until the end. They can't handle scrambling an egg. How are they gonna handle putting together all these meals? Terrible trifle. Get out of my way, Becky. I didn't come here to make friends. I am ready to be the top dog in this competition. Desserts are pleasant and fun for everyone. I do miss the sprinkles, though. I think they're cute. Yeah. During holidays and special occasions, they are best celebrated, especially when people bake together. Everyone has some twist they like to do when baking. One contestant took the creative twist too far for comfort. Becky was assigned to do one of the most technical desserts in the challenge. Trifle. What the hell is a trifle? Being already flustered by the complicated dish, she couldn't get more of the ingredients she needed to complete it. Where is the jelly? Uh, well, this was supposed to be it. However, uh, I didn't get enough sheets of gelatin. As one of the top bakers in the competition, Becky seasoned a trifle in order to try and be more creative than her rival. Did you do have a strategy in presenting us with such dissonant flavors? Thought that the star anise was certainly a very strange pick. After Joe took a bite, his face immediately showed regret complete excess, and quite frankly, an embarrassing dish that I wouldn't even recommend eating. I don't think that's edible. There were a lot of burns in this season. Those were some of the worst of MasterChef Season 3. If you want to see more videos like this, click or tap that subscribe button. And in order to become a trusted babble topper, be sure to ding the bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.